we had discussed in the previous lecture the two important cells of the immune system that is macrophage and dendritic cells and we had clearly stated that these two cells are antigen presenting cells they are professional antigen presenting cells today we will take up the other immune cells that is neutrophil eosinophil and basophil and neutrophil is all called is also called as polymorphonuclear phagocyte it is a phagocyte but of a different type of phagocyte because of the architecture of its nucleus nucleus has dumbbells and the number of dumbbells will increase in neutrophil as the neutrophil starts getting aged it may have six dumbbells in its nucleus as shown in the first picture of the blood smear that i had shown you the mature neutrophil look at this neutrophil here has got four dumbbells it can go up to six and the immature neutrophil which is to the extreme right hand top corner has the nucleus without distinct dumbbells distinct dumbbells means that neutrophil is for phagocytosis so since it has a polymorphic nature of the nucleus it is called as polymorpho nuclear phagocyte now what are the functions of the neutrophils you know that we have about the neutrophils they arrive at the site of inflammation immediately okay they are the first cells to arrive at the site of inflammation and since they arrive at the site of inflammation they are the first cells to encounter the pathogen which has entered the body okay and cause the inflammation at the site probably the inflammated site is wounded site and they will start phagocytosis the process some of the neutrophils will die and they form the cells i'd mentioned about that and the neutrophils show excessive phagocytotic activity after they encounter the antigen and they are responsible for destruction of the antigen and that antigen could be bacteria or virus and they help in destruction of that antigen through the same mechanism of fusion of the phagosome with the lysosome now exist in two types of granules in the diagram you can make out it is mentioned as primary granules primary azurophilic granule and secondary granule both these are nothing but granular lysosomes they are lysosomal in activity because they have got lytic enzymes and azure is referred to be the stain and both of these granules show a differential staining primary granule will stain darker blue and secondary granule will stain lighter blue that's the only difference and there is difference in and these are the two granules that will fuse with the phagosome and they bring about the lysis of the the pathogen that has entered okay and you know that the neutrophil being a wbc it can be in the circulation for about 7 to 10 hours and it may enter the tissue spaces and remain remain there for 3 days but generally entering of the tissue spaces is a very rare phenomenon if it enters for the sake of inflammation and we have spoken about that the the neutrophil has the ability to attach to the blood vessels and squeeze out of the blood vessel attaching is called as margination and squeezing out of the blood vessel is called as the extravasation or diapedesis and then enter the tissue space if there is a requirement for the inflammation otherwise most of the time it is restricted to the blood and in blood the population of the neutrophils will increase and it would be somewhere about 12 to 14000 in a person that is male 
who has viral or bacterial infection. In a female, it may increase to 11 to 12,000 from 10,000. And that will be the indicator of bacterial or viral infection. And that process of increasing the population of neutrophils is called as leukocytosis. Leukocytosis. And for what? For which the trigger comes in the bone marrow. And in the bone marrow, the stem cells respond to the granulocyte colony stimulating factor secreted by the macrophage. We have dealt with that cytokine when the macrophage is activated. So granulocyte colony stimulating factor will be responsible for the proliferation of the neutrophil in the bone marrow. And from there, they enter the blood and come into the blood for the defense of the person. And neutrophil chemotactic factor, we have spoken about this in innate immunity also, which is secreted by the mast cells which have come in contact with the antigen. And that will attract the neutrophils at the site where the bacterial or viral infection has taken place. Neutrophil chemotactic factor, which attracts the neutrophils. Okay. And they are the primary phagocytes of the immune system. Okay. But they do not have the ability to present the antigen just like the way the dendritic cells and the macrophages did. Even though macrophage and dendritic cells show the phagocytosis and processing of the antigen and present that antigen, that ability is lacking in the neutrophils. They are meant only for phagocytosis and destruction of the pathogen. And I had spoken about increase in respiratory burst, that is increase in oxygen uptake by the neutrophils whenever they encounter the pathogen and bring about the lysis of the pathogen. Okay, that is by reactive oxygen species. The reactive oxygen species is capable of reacting on the plasma membrane and bring about lipid peroxidation of the plasma membrane of the bacteria and destroy the plasma membrane of the bacteria. Hence, the bacteria will be unable to take any nutrition and die due to starvation. So, the primary granules that are there, which are like a type of lysosomes, they have lytic enzymes and peroxidases. Both are capable of causing damage to the pathogenic organism. And the secondary granule contains lactoferrin, collagenase, and lysozymes. Lactoferrin, I have told you that it is a type of protein that deprives iron, Fe, Fe ions for the bacteria. When bacteria needs those Fe ions, it is not available because lactoferrin can chelate with that ion and deprive that to the bacteria. So the bacterial growth can be hampered. Okay. So primary and secondary granules are modified lysosomes in the neutrophil. They fuse with the phagosome to cause the destruction. What other additional features the neutrophil has? It has the receptor for C3B complement plus the receptor for FC epsilon. Epsilon is for IgE, immunoglobulin E. So immunoglobulin E is a major uh, allergic antibody. We will talk about that separately when we are talking about hypersensitivity and allergic reactions. But for the time you keep in mind, it is one of the type of the antibody that is secreted. And FC epsilon, when it binds to the neutrophil, and it can bring about the cytotoxic damage to the pathogen using a mechanism called as antibody-mediated cytotoxic reaction. Antibody-mediated cytotoxic reaction. So this antibody-mediated or antibody-dependent cytotoxic reaction is also called as ADCC reaction. ADCC reaction, antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity, ADCC reaction. With that mechanism, it can kill the pathogen. There are sometimes the pathogens like parasites, the parasites of the protozoan origin, which are responsible for causing malaria protozoan pathogen, that is malarial pathogen. 
which is supposed to be a plasmodium, a protozoa. And sometimes you may come across other parasites like roundworm, that is worm infection in the intestine. At that time, in the intestinal lining, these neutrophils can get activated and they bring about the killing of that pathogen using IgE-mediated cytotoxic reaction. Okay, so even then, the infection continues. Why? Because these pathogens have other mechanisms of prevention of killing, which is at the moment beyond the part of this discussion. So we will discuss that later. Okay, so as far as neutrophil is concerned, it is a primary phagocyte capable of destruction of the pathogen and it has got the enzymes and bacteriostatic agents in its cytoplasm stored in two different forms as primary granules and secondary granules and it is the first cell to arrive at the site of inflammation okay it has the tremendous ability to squeeze, squeeze out of the blood vessel and enter the area of inflammation okay that is as far as neutrophils are concerned then we'll talk about the eosinophils i said that these get the name because of the special stain that they get that is eosin eosin is reddish orange stain and that stain the specifically stains the granules in its cytoplasm unlike the neutrophil the eosinophil does not have many dumbbells in its nucleus it has at least two dumbbells or generally the nucleus is u-shaped u-shaped nucleus and eosinophil is in a limited amount present in the blood and it does not exceed beyond five percent if it exceeds beyond five percent it is called as eosinophilia and it is not good if the eosinophil percentage increases in the blood beyond five percent it is an indicator indicator of a, some kind of pathogenic infection or parasitic infection in the body suppose the eosinophil population goes up in the body and there is a severe respiratory infection severe respiratory infection the person will be experiencing severe cough okay cough and mucus secretion from his bronchial passage and at that time if you do the eosinophil count then it will indicate that there is some bronchial infection which is locally shown in the bronchial region pharyngitis is another type of infection and that causes the eosinophil population to go they show limited amount of phagocytosis they are not as active as neutrophils. They show limited amount of phagocytosis and limited amount of extra vegetation means coming out of the blood vessels. And they respond to the eosinophil chemotactic factor secreted by the mast cells. Okay. And they aggregate in the area. Whenever there is roundworm infection, roundworm infection leads to increase in population of the eosinophil. And plus, the person, because of the eosinophil population increase, shows some rash on the skin because the granules in the cytoplasm of the eosinophil will start secreting and pouring out large number of sulfotransferases, sulfatases, and the basic proteins, basic proteins into the blood. And these sulfotransferases and sulfatases and some basic proteins, they been bring about a kind of reaction in the body and irritation in the skin and skin rash will erupt in the person. So at that time, if the investigation is done, proper investigation is done, you would see that the person may be having some uh, parasite living within him. And sometimes the people who experience malarial infection also experience this eosinophilia because of excessive activity of the eosinophils because the parasite that is plasmodium parasite hiding within the liver cells or in the rbc's 
and some amount of antigen that of that might have been released in the body that has stimulated the eosinophil so eosinophil like neutrophil also has also has fc epsilon receptor for the ige and it is also capable of bringing about antibody mediated cytotoxic reaction that is adcc reaction where it can help in killing the pathogen infested cell by using ige antibody as a bridge between the pathogen infested cell and on its receptor so it pours out these substances at that region and causes the lysis of that parasite but at the same time once again as i told you that some of the parasites are well adapted and they avoid these reaction by secreting certain special substances on their body wall and those substances act as inhibitors inhibitors so therefore only medication can remove these parasites from the body rather than these immune cells immune cells will do their level best they try to fight it out they try to defend against these parasites but at the same time they fail because the parasites are adapted nowadays okay so eosinophil is another important uh, wbc uh, only about 5% is there sometimes it goes up to 10% or 15% in people suffering from eosinophilia but soon with medication you have to decrease the population of the eosinophils otherwise discomfort will be very very high in the body because of those secretions by the eosinophil which has got other adverse effects in the body okay then comes the basophil basophil the generally in normal individual normal individual who is not exposed to the allergens those which cause allergy or who is not exposed to the heavy metal toxins heavy metal toxin toxins derived from heavy metals like mercury lead cadmium nickel all these things the basophil population will be zero but sometimes they say that it can go up to 1% but in severely allergic people severely allergic people basophil population will be very high and the police people police personnel for working in the traffic islands who stand there and do not protect themselves from the smoke emissions and they inhale the smoke emissions which contains the lead okay lead and that lead when it goes into their blood in quite some amount it could it could cause toxicity and it is responsible for the increase in the population of basophils basophil population goes up when there is heavy metal poisoning or there should be a severe allergic reaction they get their name basophil because they stain with base of base basic stain okay and the basic stain is generally in the case of the lishman stain is the gimsa gimsa and uh, there is also uh, the uh, methylene blue which is there both are basic stains and the granule stain blue in basophil and the basophil nucleus doesn't have any proper shape it can assume any shape kidney shape or spherical whatever okay and the basophils which are activated whenever there is severe allergic reaction can undergo degranulation means those granules can come and fuse with the plasma membrane and evert out everting out means pouring out they evert out and pour out pharmacological mediators and they basophils do not show any phagocytosis but they have a receptor for fc epsilon that is ige on their surface and plus they have the receptor for the complement that is complement c3a and c4a and c5a i have not mentioned it here but keep that in mind they are all four of them that is c3a c4a and c5a are called as anaphyla toxins they cause anaphylaxis 
Now, those receptors which are there on the base of pill, when they are bound by these complements, C3A, C4A, and C5A, the base of pill can get activated. Or the base of pill can get, get activated when IgE comes and binds to the receptor that is FC epsilon receptor. And activated base of pill will release the pharmacological mediators from its granules, and they are all listed here that is prostaglandin, bradykinin, 5 hydroxy tryptamine, which is also called as serotonin, and leukotrienes. And when, whenever these substances are secreted in the blood in excess, especially when serotonin content goes up, increases, it results in causing the blood vessels to dilate in the brain region and cause headache. In the brain, when the blood vessels dilate beyond certain proportion and there is pulsating an excess amount of blood reaching the brain, the brain will experience headache. Majority of the people who suffer from allergy, they may suffer from migraine headaches due to allergens. And migraine headache after consuming the allergen is the cause of these pharmacological mediators released by the base of it. Second cell is the mass cell, we'll come to that a little later. And these pharmacological mediators cause the dilation. These pharmacological mediators cause dilation of the blood vessels and gushing of blood to that area and smooth muscle contractions in the places like in your bronchial passage. If the smooth muscle contraction takes place, you find it difficult to breathe. And if the smooth muscle contraction takes place in your intestine, you find that there is intestinal cramp. There is pain in the intestine. And all this is experienced after the allergen contact takes place. And basophil become active only through allergen contact, allergenic substance. Even some of the bacterial toxins, pathogenic toxins, and even some of the parasitic toxins may cause basophil to get activated. And they do cause the local pain in certain areas if the basophil have responded to those toxins. And therefore, basophil is considered to be a type 1 allergic reaction immune cell. Type 1 allergic reaction. What is this type 1 allergic reaction? We'll be talking about that in hypersensitivity. But for the timing, you keep in mind that it is responsible for the anaphylaxis allergic reaction and it responds for the severe allergy because of these pharmacological media its response generally basophil response is the adverse response adverse reaction and it doesn't give any pleasant feeling and it doesn't have any good to do in the immune response it does more damage in the immune response than any other cells are concerned compared to neutrophils, compared to the dendritic cells and macrophages, damage done by basophils is tremendous. Similarly, its cousin, that is the mast cells. The mast cells, which we had discussed, and I had shown you one histological photograph of the mast cells with granules in the cytoplasm. And now in the picture here, it has been shown that two IgE molecules are bound there to the wall of the mast cell, that is plasma membrane. And they are sitting adjacent to each other and to which the antigen is bound. If that happens, the mast cell is not going to keep quiet. It has the receptor for the IgE, FC, epsilon receptor, plus it has the receptor for C3A, C4A, and C5A, which are the complement components. And whenever it binds to these receptors, it undergoes degranulation. And when it undergoes degranulation, just like the the base of film, it will also release the pharmacological mediators. And it is the major cell of type 1 hypersensitivity. Type 1 hypersensitivity. And it is, I had mentioned that mast cells are present wherever blood vessels are there. It is there in the endothelial lining of the blood vessels. 
okay plus mucosal lining which are the mucosal lining the mucosal lining is your nasal passage bronchial passage gastrointestinal tract passage all these are considered to be mucosal lining it is there in those areas and brings about adverse reaction as i mentioned it has got the hc epsilon receptor as well as c3p plus other complements and gets activated same reaction it causes because of the pharmacological mediator which is in addition to those pharmacological mediators that I had mentioned that is prostaglandin bradykinin leukotriene it it releases another major pharmacological mediator that is histamine okay it releases histamine and that histamine has got severe action in the body therefore generally first medication that is given during the allergic reaction is antihistaminic tablet or the best option to prevent these granules from undergoing degranulation is a steroid tablet or steroid hormone a corticosteroid administered will prevent these granules from undergoing degranulation and prevents inflammation and both basophils and mast cells are known to be responsible for the inflammation because both of them release inflammatory cytokines and the inflammatory cytokines are interferon gamma and tnf alpha and both these inflammatory cytokines are responsible for causing adverse reaction in the body and it results whenever these pharmacological mediators goes beyond certain limit it will cause anaphylactic shock and that anaphylactic shock could lead to cardiac arrest and respiratory arrest and death of the person therefore the people who suffer from allergy it is always better to keep the the corticosteroid tablet or spray along with them to prevent this adverse reaction from happening and it will be useful for them as a first aid and these are about the immune cells then coming to the organs of the immune system we were talking about cells and organs of the immune system the organs of the immune system can be classified into primary and secondary lymphoid organs they play a major role in the immune system and the primary lymphoid organs are two of them that is thymus and the bone marrow and the secondary lymphoid organs are the lymph node tonsils adenoids spleen and the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue which is called as malt and cutaneous associated lymphoid tissue which is called as cart c a l t cart malt cart all these play a very important role in the immune system of, of an individual and they share their immune cells for defending the infection in a person now let us take the picture of the sites of these immune organs okay here in the picture they have shown the primary lymphoid organ that is thymus you can see it is in the chest area where our major blood vessel that is arising from the heart that is called as systemic trunk it is present lining the systemic trunk and the thymus is two lobed structure thymus is two lobed structure it is there in that area and the bone marrow the two major bones that is your humor humerus and femur that is thigh bone and the elbow bone both these bones contain large amount of bone marrow and that bone marrow contributes for the development of the immune cells they contribute all the wbcs that you require all the rbcs that you require including the t cells and the b cells okay and thymus is the organ that is meant for the 
the maturation of the T lymphocytes. And without the thymus, T lymphocytes cannot undergo maturation. And if the T lymphocytes do not undergo maturation, then the person may suffer from severe combined immunodeficiency. Okay, severe combined immunodeficiency. In short form, it is called as SCID or SCID, spelled as SCID, severe combined immunodeficiency. Without T lymphocytes, you can't get the activation of the B lymphocytes. Therefore, the person will have failure of both arms of the immune system, that is cell-mediated immune system, as well as humoral, that is antibody production. Therefore, thymus is a very, very important organ. In addition, the bone marrow. Bone marrow is also a very, very important organ. Without bone marrow, there is no immune system. Okay. Then coming to the secondary lymphoid organs. I had said about the adenoids. You know, the adenoids are present in the nasal region in the cavity just below the eye. And sometimes those adenoids undergo swelling and you have severe pain in on either side of your nostrils. And those adenoids undergo swelling locally because they are lymphoid organs there and they have encountered the antigen. Generally, they respond immediately to the rhinovirus. Rhinovirus is nothing but your cold, common cold virus. Probably now, coronavirus also is responsible for increased swelling of adenoids in the patients because coronavirus is also a type of uh, rhinovirus, infects through the nose. Okay, so adenoids are situated there. Then comes the tonsils. They have shown tonsils here. It doesn't mean that it is present in your cheek. It is in the deep, deep throat area. And you know that when the tonsils swell, when the tonsils swell, you find it difficult to swallow. And you experience this when you experience common cold. Common cold also gives increased size of tonsils and they rub against each other. And because they rub against each other in your throat area, it is there in the throat, but location shown here, it appears that it is on the cheek. It is not on the cheek. It is in the throat area. And on either side, on either side of your buccal cavity that is ending, it is there. And you can feel it by pressing there in that area below your lower jaw. Below your lower jaw. With fingers, you press there and see there are two swollen or large glandular structures these are tonsils and sometimes doctors advise for some people who have this excessive activity of tonsils to get rid of tonsils one should never make a mistake of getting rid of lymphoid organs tonsils should not be removed they should be there you should control them only through medication and they are very very important defending organs that are there whenever the pathogen of the viral type or a bacterial type which causes the respiratory disease enters your body through the oral passage or nasal passage the two important secondary lymphoid organs to respond is adenoids and the tonsils because they have rich amount of immune cells in them and those immune cells pick up these antigens and respond, they will give you immunity. Understand? So the adenoids and tonsils are basically meant in the region that is your oral passage as well as nasal passage to defend these two passages. Plus, if at all any entry takes place through the eyes, from the mucosal lining of the eyes, they also help there because there is a common connection. And that is what is called as sinusoids. And people say that you suffer from sinusitis. Some people do suffer from sinusitis and constantly suffer from sinusitis because they are having some allergy. And because of the sinusitis, there is continuous exudation of fluid, mucus, from their nasal passage. And that is the reaction shown by your body. And there is nothing wrong with the person. It is just that the person is showing some immune reaction. So sinusoids 
or sinuses are connected all together and these are the immune organs that are defending you in that region body then follow this green nodular track starting from your ear and from the front of the ear as well as from the back of the ear they start as small 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 nodules joined by joined by the duct and that is nothing but those are the lymph nodes the lymph nodes that are present near the ear region they start from the ear region front of the ear front of the ear there is a projection in your ear in the front a small projection just next to it it will be there you press and see it it pays it is painful it is because it is a lymphoid lymphoid organ then behind the ear okay behind the ear from there they come and join and form a chain and they are connected together through a lymphoid duct the lymphatic channel okay and that lymphatic channel runs one channel runs in the center of the body parallel to your vertebral column parallel to your vertebral column and another lymphatic channel starts near your armpit armpit and it it, it runs laterally along the lateral side of your body and goes near the inguinal region inguinal region is the region that is where your thigh is joining the abdomen the joint of the thigh with the abdomen at that joint in that in that portion region of the body where the abdomen is joining thigh sometimes the lymph node will be swollen and you feel the pain there in the junction or sometimes you might have experienced the pain in your armpit armpit the lymph node will be swollen in the armpit okay when the, the lymph nodes swell because they are they are responding to the antigen even whenever there is a pain suppose let us say some some heavy object fell on your toe and toe got injured and you will see that the lymph node in the inguinal region is going to swell and you will have pain there and you can palpitate it or you can press in that area and feel the pain and it is swollen so the lymph nodes which are there interconnected by the lymphatic channels and those lymphatic channels which are connecting are the channels that are the passages for the immune cells to pass from different areas and those lymphatic channels are broken down into small capillaries just like the way the blood capillaries are there okay just to show you the the lymphatic channels i will show you that diagram see here this is the lymph node and these are the lymphatic channels that are emptying into the lymph node they are coming from different parts of the body and carrying the antigen and that antigen is getting poured into the lymph node and the lymph node is rich with t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes and antigen presenting cells and all activation of the immune system activation of the t and b lymphocytes take place in the lymph node all right activation of the t and b lymphocytes takes place in the lymph node through the antigen presenting cell now whatever the antibody that is going to be produced in the lymph node that will be in this area that is in the central area of the lymph node medulla going to be poured out through the another large vessel and that is apparent lymphatic vessel so lymphatic channels are spread out just like the blood capillaries and the lymphatic channels are there parallel with blood vessels wherever there are blood vessels wherever there are blood capillaries parallel with the blood capillary there will be lymphatic channels and these lymphatic channels connect with the lymph node and plus they also empty themselves in the heart and the lymphatic channels will contain lymph fluid and it is a colorless colorless approximately little bit of pinkish color will be there pinkish color that is coming from the background of the blood the lymphatic fluid <coughs> that is the fluid for circulation of the t and b lymphocytes and other immune cells okay and these lymphatic channels 
facilitate movement of the the lymphocytes from one area to the another area <coughs> as well as they facilitate the transport of the antigen wherever the antigen has entered the body and from there they carry that antigen to the nearest lymph node nearest lymph node and that lymph node undergoes swelling because there will be tremendous amount of activity of proliferation means multiplication of the t and b lymphocytes and when they multiply because of the immune stimulation the lymph nodes will swell okay similarly the tonsils will swell whenever the tonsil has encountered an antigen similarly the adenoids will swell but thymus and bone marrow do not swell but they show excessive proliferation and production of the new new t lymphocytes from the thymus from where they actually send out the t lymphocytes to different parts of the lymph nodes and there the t lymphocytes undergo activation but in the thymus the t lymphocytes do not show activation they only show maturation thank you